I'm going out. Uh, not 100% exactly where we're going at the moment. But what we're planning is we're going to drive to the Tyne Tunnel, but the pedestrian one, where you can walk through. We're going to walk through the pedestrian Tyne Tunnel, which takes us to the south side of the Tyne. From there, we're going to head towards the coast, and we're going to do a coastal walk again. And now the, the coastal cliffs are completely different to... Northumberland and the north of the Tyne coast, uh, they're made of a different kind of rock, as far as I'm, I'm aware. Um, so it'll, it'll look a little bit different to Northumberland, although we're only, you know, a few miles away. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going out. Okay, so it start, starts here. This is the Howden side for the Tyne Tunnel, the pedestrian Tyne Tunnel. A little bit of history there, the Stevenson Trail. It's a scale map there, quite right to scale. I'm going to go down here. I think this is the longest yeah. wooden escalators. Certainly in Britain, because I'm for absolute miles. These used to be the longest escalators in Europe. Oh, there you go. It's been confirmed. The longest wooden escalators in Europe. Uh, however, they are not working right now, and they were going to restore them, hence all that down there. And we are currently walking down. Underneath the time. There you go. That is Mahoosis. Cyclists go that way, and there's a lift. I can see for miles and miles and miles and miles. Okay, so we've been walking for absolutely miles. I think we went the wrong direction, but hey ho. Uh, we've now eventually got to the sea. So in the distance, just over there is the mouth of the Tyne, I think. And then, uh, you can't see anything because we're too too far down but just over there we've got sort of light lighthouse which we're going to head towards now have a look see if there's any dolphins out there quite often get dolphins down here so uh, it's not out at the moment we're going to go down and walk along the beach in a minute along the rocks Tra. okay so you just about see the lighthouse over there. It's actually called Suta Lighthouse, not Sort of Lighthouse. I always pronounce it wrong. And actually it's in the wrong colours if you look. It's in red and white, it should be black and white really. Now also that pillar there used to have an arch and that collapsed uh, I think it was last year. Um, and the other pillar that's next to it there that's also collapsed into the sea so it's quite a, a delicate bit of landscape here now that thing there is actually a, a shaft that goes down to the beach and there's actually a cafe and bar down there. So that'd be quite interesting to see. I think we've literally done about eight or nine kilometres up to now and we've only just got to see, I can't believe it. Alright, let's carry on. Yeah. 
yeah, so that's the top end of the grotto. Um, we're just going to walk along here, go towards the uh, to the lighthouse. Um, see what's occurring there. Uh, yeah, we've done 11 kilometres. I've just looked, 11 kilometres about up to this point. Um, which ain't bad. Which ain't bad. Um, as I said on my last video, uh, two months ago, I had a heart attack, so slowly getting into uh, walking again and then eventually a bit of wild camping once I'm up to a certain level of fitness go with this little dweeb it's Danny so uh, yeah let's carry on all right I'm just gonna get away from this road and um, I haven't got a clue what that is behind us and we're just along from Suter Lighthouse now <sighs> you knackered right so uh, that's what that building is it's the lime, lime kilns um, and look, it is Suta Lighthouse. I've always called it Salta Lighthouse, but I've just been corrected. There's no L in it. I'm a bit of a buffoon, I'm afraid. So there you go. Check that bad boy out. Just in the side, the side of the rocks there. And this Suta Lighthouse. Quite impressive, eh? Now this is weird. There's a car park there and there's literally no roads leading to it in either direction. Obviously the uh, the cliffs have given way so they've they've now put barriers around there so you can't literally you're not allowed to step into that part at all. But how did you get to it in the first place? This is weird. Literally, I don't know. It's like it just literally ends there, but it doesn't seem to go any further. A suit lighthouse. That stood there, Preston. Oh, apparently used to be a village here. Look at what you could have won. Walk down here. Oh, look at the thirds on there. Cormorants on. Loads of cormorants. Seagulls. Check out that stack. That's that same stack as I just showed before, with all the cormorants on the top. But look at the bottom of it. How long is this going to last? Before it collapses.
Oh, let's keep going. Can I just say, you know? Right, there's the ferry going off to Holland. Every day at this time of day, that ferry goes off and it goes all the way over to Holland from basically that's the mouth of the Tyne. So the ship comes from way in the Tyne, comes out and sails off to Holland. Lucky buggers. Mind you, we're in COVID time, so probably not. Won't be many uh, holiday makers on that, the old truck drivers. I <sighs> wish I was going away. Anyway, let's get on. Right, we've just crossed the 15 kilometer threshold. Uh, we're actually on our way back now. We're going to walk all the way along to the coast. So, that's South Shields Beach. Just there, probably can't see it's blurred. And then that's Tymouth Pier, or that's the south side of Tymouth Pier. There's Tymouth Priory, and we're going to head over towards that sort of direction. I'm going to stop wobbling. People fishing over there, look. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous to approach the cliffs, so there must be a bit of a mini cliff there. Right, this is the sort of beauty that we have to put up with in the northeast. I don't know why I live here. It's just horrendous. This is terrible. We get horrible grim weather. And terrible views. Let's keep going. Right, it's just, just before we saw the the ferry going off to Holland and there's the party boat so that's the Tui ship cruise liner going round Britain going to Scotland or wherever um, it's basing itself in Newcastle at the moment and it's going out every couple of days so um, there you go check that out Who'd want to live in the northeast, eh? Terrible. All right, we're just at South Shields Beach now. We're not going to walk along the beach. It's just too too sandy and beachy. So we're going to we're going to walk all the way along and uh, get to the mouth of the Tyne. Oh yeah, knackered. Whew. Right, we've just gone past South Shields Beach and we're now heading in that general direction to um, South Shields. We're going to catch, we're going to catch the, uh, the ferry over to North Shields. So we're going to mix it up a bit on a boat. Uh, little monument there, how cool is that? Oosh. Right. Time to view. Back in North Tyneside. Oh, nice little MGB GT there. Oh, back on hallowed ground. I can tell you back in North Tyneside, look at the rubbish on the floor. Yep, right. We're at the marina, so we're not far from home now. 
this has been a hard walk. <laughs> Trying to get fit. But that big ship that we saw earlier on, uh, that would have been... Uh, over there originally. Over there somewhere. So... Yeah, we've done about 22k up to now. Um, so 22k, I think is it's quite a, a good amount of miles or kilometres. Um, yeah, obviously I had a heart attack for six, eight weeks ago, and then uh, 22k today. That's not bad. Um, run out of water now. Need to get home. Get a drink. Absolutely parched. Um, right, it's gan on. This is the last section now. As Danny, he's just been talking about eating bird crap, <laughs> uh, seagulls, because there's me looking up just as there's a bird, and he's told me not to look up when you think the bird's gonna poo because it tastes awful. How he knows it tastes awful, oh, I have not got a clue, but there you go. <sighs> right, we're gonna walk up here. Bit of a slope. It's not doing the back of the knees any good, but hey-ho, let's get on. back that was absolutely knackering did about 26 kilometers um, so we walked I drove to the um, I drove to the tunnel at Jarrah we walked through the tunnel and then I um, Started my tracker because I, I forgot to set it before we went through the tunnel. Um, and then we walked maybe wrongly through housing estates rather than going more direct towards the sea. So it took us a long time to even get to the sea. Eventually we did get to the sea and we walked along the coast all the way to Suta Lighthouse, which is a, a beautiful little uh, lighthouse, which is red and white. Um, turned around there and then headed back. Um, obviously I'm doing this for my health, uh, having had a heart attack. Uh, I did have a bit of a wobbly stage at one point, halfway back, or just just past Suta Lighthouse on the way back. We had to stop for probably about 15 minutes, so I was, uh, I was getting a few chest pains. Um, had to have some more spray again a few times. And then we carried on. Legs are absolutely killing me. It's the furthest I've walked for, oh, probably... I don't know, 20, 20 odd years. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. The sun was beautifully hot today. Um, oh, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, so, I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do this. Anybody can do it. Um, yeah, I had a heart attack eight weeks ago. Before that, um, six years ago, I had my pancreas and my spleen removed probably five years before that I had my gallbladder removed so there's all there's a few you know health issues that I've that I've had in the past and um, you've just got to get on with it and this is my way of getting on with it so I need to try and get myself a little bit fitter I need to get to a point where you know I'm not getting chest pains um, this was relatively flat there was a few little undulations but nothing serious um, 
at some point I want to I want to get into the hills I want to be able to you know go to the Cheviots and maybe eventually the Lake District and then um, start doing a bit of wild camping get the tent out and um, camp hike camp and uh, that's that's when my life I'll know that uh, I'm doing the right thing when I can get to that so uh, hopefully hopefully this will inspire other people maybe you know in a similar sort of situation as me where they've had some sort of trauma and they're thinking oh, I can't do anything any longer I can't I can't move on well you can I'm 50 I'm not really old but I'm, I'm getting there I'm 50 now um, and this is the beginning of my new life so Tarara a bit. See you in the next one when we're going out.